Uh, so here's a question from, ah, from Joel Delcy, Joel, Joel Delcy, Joel Delcy. Um, I need your help. Recently, somebody or a group of somebodies has found my IP address and has begun to DDoS me for the past two weeks, a distributive denial of service attack. Um, I can't use a VP VPN because it slows my uh, internet down way too much, and they already have my IP, so I don't think it would help anyways. I've tried to change my IP through various methods, but I had no success at all. I tried to IP config, release, and renew from the command prompt. What that would do. Um, I tried to DHCP release, then re then DHCP renew, and I tried to set my DHCP least uh, time lower than disconnect for the amount of time. I tried to clone my PC's MAC address and the manual internet connection setup, which was something somebody recommended to do for my specific router. And after I did that, my computer couldn't connect at all. <laughs> yeah, don't screw with your MAC address. <laughs> Don't screw with your MAC address. Um, I tried holding the reset button down and setting up a new network many different times and none of them worked. My IP is dynamic and my router is a D-Link DIR615. I use a wireless adapter on my computer to connect to the internet. I do have a modem connected and my uh, uh, and my ISP is Brighthouse. Is there any surefire solution to this besides disconnecting my internet for a certain period of time? Is there a setting or program that you know about that can block attacks? Uh, or at the very least, do you know why my IP won't change? Um, yeah. I know why your IP won't change, because I don't really know what the hell you're doing. Uh, if, we're going to go into this in a second. If, which is a big if, which is, which is a huge if, if, bold, underlined, italicized, in neon lights. If you're actually under a distributive denial of service attack, what IP address are they attacking? Boo, 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 boo. What IP address are they attacking? Boo, 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 boo. They're attacking your external IP address, which you do not control. Unless you're paying a crap ton of money for your service, which obviously you're not. Um, so if if you're getting a distributed dial service attack, they're attacking your external IP address, the IP address uh, on the, 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 the outbound side of your router or your modem. Um, and so when you do an, an IP config release renew, you are releasing and renewing your internal IP address. So your external IP address is you know, 225.38.56.1, and then your internal IP address scheme is 192.168.1. whatever, right? So whenever you're you're releasing and renewing your IP address, uh, you're releasing and renewing your internal IP address, which sh should have absolutely zero with, uh, to do with the distributed denial of service attack. As far as changing your MAC address, uh, don't do that unless you know what the hell you're doing. The MAC address is the, the globally unique address of your um, uh, of your uh, network card, um, and that is used for something called ARP, uh, address, uh, address Resolution Protocol, um, which basically don't screw with unless you know what you're doing. You can screw with it. It's called Mac cloning. You can modify your Mac address. You can, technically, but it's something that you do exceedingly rarely because it can screw things up because because ARP works down at the switch level, so it's below TCP IP. It works down at the switch level, so if you start screwing around with your Mac address, it can cause all kinds of wackiness to happen. So uh, the first thing that I would say here is I think it's a big if as to whether or not you're, you're undergoing a real distributed denial of service attack. Uh, a lot of people complain about things like hacking attacks, and at the end of the day, what you find out is is no, you have a piece of crap D-Link router. If I walked into an environment and they were saying they had network problems and I looked down and I saw D-Link, the first thing I would do is throw the D-Link away. If I walked into an environment and they didn't say they had network problems and I looked down and they said they, and they had a D-Link, the first thing I would do is throw the D-Link away. Uh, D-Link, <laughs> D-Link is one of those companies I, I just generally, it's not even that I hate. It's just like almost everything that I worked with D-Link is just a pile of crap. Like, there are companies that I dislike, such as Norton, where generally, Norton has paid me, a, gotten me paid a lot over the years because they put out some wonky software. Uh, but I can see the situation where I would use Norton. Again, HP. I would never in my life buy an HP laptop. Eh, an HP printer, sure. Uh, an HP server. Sure, laptop scrap. No, D Link, I would never touch anything. D Link is just ridiculous. Like, they they are just bad. They're just ridiculously bad. I have found them to be ridiculously bad over the years. So, really, honestly, what I would say is, is, is 
grab your ding link, throw it in the trash, go out and buy a new router. Uh, Netgear, a lot of people like Netgear nowadays. I personally like the Apple Airport Extreme. Absolutely awesome. Linksys, I'm not so much a fan of Linksys anymore. Uh, but go for Netgear or Apple, put that in, and I, I damn near guarantee you, wah wah! everything will be solved right everybody loves to blame hackers blaming hackers is one of those things everybody does and you're like no it's just your crappy ass piece of equipment do remember uh whether it's d-link or whether it's linksys or whether it's even netgear or some of these other companies when you buy consumer uh level uh networking equipment uh as i used to tell my clients basically it has the expiration time of eggs it's just how it is. Uh, they are a consumable item. So even back when Linksys was a much better product than I currently feel that it is now, even with them, um, I knew every between one to two years I had to toss my router or my access point or whatever. You know, you buy it for 60 bucks, it doesn't last for forever. It's just the, the quality of the components aren't as good as enterprise level stuff. How it's built isn't as good. It just, because it, it just, it does. I mean, I just saw that time and time and time again out in the real world you go into a person's house they say you know my network isn't working you pull the old uh, router you throw a new router in and it's all working and they say well why can't you fix the old one and you say well I'm gonna cost you a hundred bucks an hour and I can sit here for five hours screwing around with it or I can I can plug in that brand new router that's gonna be faster for you because again it's a new thing um, and will work and yeah okay Right. Um, so that's the thing. So swap out. Yeah, I would just say I would say toss your D link. I, I think D link is a I. My opinion is my opinion and my experience has been D link makes some garbage products. Um, so I would toss the D link and go from there. And again, it's not just a D. I mean. One, I think D-Link does garbage products, but also, two, any of this consumer-grade grade networking gear, you just realize every year or two, there's a good chance you're going to have to toss it just because the quality isn't so good. Now, as far as this D-Link uh, model in specific is concerned, um, I did do a little bit of research on it, and the only thing that I can really see uh, that, that might help you in a distributed denial of service attack, if that's what's happening, which... I highly doubt, uh, is turn off logging. So this can be a real big problem uh, a lot of people don't think about is logging on equipment. Uh, you don't think about logging taking up too many resources. So, you know, people try to connect to a piece of equipment, the, uh, the equipment tries to connect to something else, um, and that all gets written into a text file. Uh, so normally it doesn't really matter. You know, if you're just you're just going out and you're connecting to, you know, World of Warcraft or whatever, uh, once an hour, you'll just see, you know, every minute or so there will be something added to the log and it's no big deal, right? The problem that you run into is if, which I doubt you are, if you are actually under a massive uh, distributive denial of service attack, the problem is, is every single connection that gets rejected or even accepted into that router is going to get logged. So instead of that, that little logging algorithm, that logging process, uh, you know, ticking over, you know, once every minute or once every five minutes, it's now getting hammered 10 times per second. And writing to that log takes resources, and that little piece of consumer electronic gear just fundamentally doesn't have many resources, right? Uh, so the problem that you get into if you're really under a denial of service attack is you're getting so many inbound connections, uh, attempts, that simply by uh, the process of the router refusing those attempts, but then logging it, uh, that that logging process then burns up all your resources and your, your router essentially tanks. So the only real thing that I can say for your um, for your router, if it's a fixable issue, is turn off logging, and that's something for a lot of you guys to be thinking about, especially whenever you're dealing with consumer electro uh, consumer grade equipment, is only turn on logging if you really need it. Uh, back in the day, um, I haven't bought. A lot of consumer equipment lately, but at least back in the day when I bought consumer equipment, um, they would actually they would actually say that in the little manual is like you know yes it does have logging but only turn on logging if you really needed it. So like with me, the only time I turned on logging uh, for any of my consumer grade equipment was when um, we used to deal with uh, these digital surveillance systems and we dealt with different digital surveillance systems and some of the things like PTZ control, uh, pan tilt zoom control for the cameras. 
required really weird ports, and it wasn't documented. <laughs> this is why you don't buy Chinese stuff. Um, or this is why you don't buy, like, no-name stuff. Because the problem is, this is like, yeah, if you know what port the, the PTZ control operates on, it's no big deal. The problem is, we didn't know, th there was no documentation of what, what port the PTZ control used. And so what we would do is I would turn on logging on the router on the firewall. We would then see, uh, and then I would turn on, basically I would turn on logging for the router. I would turn on the firewall to block everything. And then basically I would have the little PTZ, the little the, the, the DVR try to connect to the outside world. And I would look for the ports that got rejected. And then I'd look down and go, oh look, this PTZ uses port 9553. Okay, and then I turn everything off, configure the, the remote administration thing to use port 9553, and that's it. So that, that's what I actually did in the real world. That, that's the only time I really used logging in the real world. Uh, because honestly, lo logging, you don't think about it. You don't think about it, but logging can just be a beast when it comes to resource consumption. So really, only use logging if you're actually, in fact, going to use logging. I see this happen a lot, where people turn on logging, some kind of weird-ass security precaution, but it's like, when was the last time you looked at a log? Never. <laughs> like so, so basically, you're slowing down your entire network for a log you never look at. Yep. Um, but yeah, but really, honestly, get rid of the D-Link. Get rid of the D-Link. Uh, again, uh, Airport Extreme, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful piece of equipment. Uh, but even if not that, Netgear or something like that. Um, 